Okay, so we're going to continue with example 11. So we'll look at questions now where we're dealing with just three balls. So, uh, three spheres A, B, and C have masses M, 2, M, and 3, M respectively. The spheres move along the same straight line on a horizontal plane with A following B, which is which is following C, as a matter of fact. Uh, initially, the speeds of A, B, and C are 7 meters per second, 3 meters per second, and 1 meters per second, respectively, in the direction A to B to C. Uh, spheres A collide with sphere B, and then sphere B collides with sphere C. The coefficient of substitution between A and B is a half, and the coefficient of substitution between B and C is a quarter. Find the losses of the three spheres after the second collision, and explain how you can predict that there will be a further collision between A and B. Okay, so I set these up very similar to the way I do the other ones. So I do A, I do B. I have 7 meters per second, I have 3 meters per second there, and then I have speed C there with just one meters per second. I'm going to look at these first ones first of all. That's why I'm going to set these up. Okay. So, these first ones, I'm going to have some V, and I'm going to have some W. And I know that E is a half. Okay. So, if we do P, C, L, M, first of all, we have that 7M plus uh, 6M is going to be MV plus 2MW. So, 13 is V plus 2W, because M's cancel everywhere. Then, if we do NLR, so we do speed of separation over speed of approach, which we know is E, which is a half, is speed of separation, so W minus V, or the difference between 7 and 3, which is 4. Okay, so we got the W, take away V equals 2. We have two equations, we're going to sort one into the other one, what we're going to get there. Or we can add the two equations together to get you that W is going to be... Looks like 3W is 15, so W is going to be 5. And V is just going to be three off the back of that. All right, and then we're going to do it for the second collision. So we're going to do it for the two particles again. We're going to have five. We're going to have one. We're going to have two, and we're going to have y. Because that's going to be my new thing that I'm going to look at. No, it's not going to be two. It's going to be x rather. So we're going to do P C L M once again. We're going to go 10m plus 3m is going to be 2mx plus 3my. Again, I'm assuming you know what PCL and NLR is by now. You've done that many of them. 13 is going to be 2x and 3y. And then we're going to do NLR, which is speed of separation, speed of approach, which I'm going to know it is a quarter. We're told that here. Which is y minus x to speed of separation over speed of approach. 5 minus 1 is going to be 4. Uh, so we've got 4 and a 4, so we've got y minus x equals 1. Uh, probably makes sense to sub that one into there, doesn't it? We can't eliminate them easily. Uh, so we're going to get what? 13 is 2x and 3x and 3. That's going to mean that x is 2 then. And then off the back of that, we can get that y is going to be equal to 3, just subbing it into uh, that second equation from NLR that we got out. Alright, so that's part A. Part B, explain how you can predict that there will be a further collision between A and B. Uh, will be a further collision uh, because A is faster than B. Uh, and they are going in the same direction. Is that enough? That should be enough. 
All right, so that is what we do when we've got three balls to deal with. Okay, so several collisions. There's just some more questions here. This is example 12, I think, in the book. Uh, so we've got uniform fear P of mass 3M is moving in a straight line with speed U on a smooth horizontal table. Another uniform sphere Q Plus uniform smooth sphere Q of mass M is moving with speed to you in the same straight line as P, uh, but in the opposite direction. The sphere P collides with the sphere Q directly. The speed, the velocities of P and Q after the collision are V and W respectively, measures in the direction of motion of P before the collision. Collision of restitution between P and Q is E. Find expressions for V and W in terms of U and E. Right, we've got a bit of work to do on this one. So that means get that diagram drawn. So, uh, diagram. that's P, that's Q. Uh, U, two U going in opposite directions. V and W, we can assume are going in that direction. If one of them turns out negative, we can then conclude as why. So, part A, we're going to do P, C, L, M, first of all. So we're going to get 3MU going in opposite direction, so minus 2MU is going to be equal to 3MV plus MW. So U is 3V plus W. Then we're going to do some NLR, speed separation, speed of approach. We don't know E this time, that's okay. It's going to be the difference in the speed, so W minus V. Divided by a bit of approach, which is going to be 2u minus minus u, i.e. 3u. Uh, so we've got 3eu is going to be equal to w minus v. We can just um, eliminate those equations together, can't we? Uh, so we get that u equals 4v plus 3eu. So v is just e over 4, 1 minus 3e. Then we want to find what w is. So w is 3eu plus u over 4 minus 3e over 4. Which is just u over 4, lots of 90 plus 1. So that is your V and U. In terms of U and E, correct, spot on. Sure, that if the direction of motion of P is changed by a collision, uh, then E is greater than a third. Okay, well if the direction of motion is changed, then this side for part B, let me uh, just break this off a bit. There we go. Then, what we can say is that for part B, we want to get V to be negative. It's going in the opposite direction. So, U over 4, 1 minus 3E is less than 0. Hence, uh, uh, a third is going to be less than E. Which just means that E is going to be greater than 1 third. We're almost there. I've picked some questions out of the exercise for you to have a go at from exercise uh, was it three four C I think it is. Uh, so given that E is five over nine and that P and Q collide again in the subsequent motion, show that E prime is greater than one over nine. Right. So we're gonna go back to that diagram that we just had from what we've been told there. Uh, so I'm going to put on a new page, aren't I? So we're told that E is 5 over 9. Uh, we, we want to find V and W. So V was U over 4 times 1 minus 3 times E, which is 5 over 9. Uh, which is going to be... What, I'm going to have to do this in my head, which I don't like. U over 4 times minus 2 thirds, yuck, which is minus U over 6, I want to say. I think that's right. For W, however, 
That's u over 4 times 9e, well, that's going to be nice, but 9's cancel, uh, plus 1. That's what we have. Which is just, well, 5 plus 1, 6 u over 4. Which can be simplified, of course, to 3 half u if you want. 3 over 2. Uh, we know that q catches p. To collide again. So 3 halves e prime u is greater than u over 6. U's cancel each other out, that e prime is greater than 2 divided by 6 times 3. So e prime will be greater than what? 2 over 18, which is 1 over 9. As required. Okay. So that is more of a complicated example there of where we're looking at several collisions. But it's sort of like, well, it's similar stuff to what you know before. It's using a bit of common sense to work out well, call it because Q will catch it to P to collide again, then you know you, you can set up that little inequality, and then you can just get it out from there. Okay? So, we are almost through these. We have two little questions that we go at here, which are a bit more complicated, and I don't know if I've got enough room. Uh, so, uh, these are a bit similar to in the review exercise in the textbook, question 16, review exercise number 2. That you want to have a look at if you are uh, interested by these. So, uh, right, what am I going to do here? Show you the one on the left. Let's do it on the one on the left. Just to see if we can get it out. I might need another page. I probably will need another page. So, uh, add the U. And the 2u, what else are we told here? Not a lot. But lots to find then. So, p, c, l, m. We get that 4m u plus 2m u is 2m v plus 3m w. So, the 7. Uh, Hold on. Seven u, yeah. Equals two v plus three w. What I say? Uh, yeah. I was just checking that, that. Making sure I got it right. And then if I do with some speed of separation, speed of approach stuff, e is to be minus v over two u minus u, which is u. So we can sub that in there, can't we? So we get, what, 7u plus 2eu equals 5w. So that w is u over 5, lots of 7 plus 2e. Precisely what I wanted. Part B, we got that v is w minus eu. Um, so we can sub everything in that we got there. So we've got 7u over 5 uh, plus 2 over 5 eu minus eu, which precisely is u over 5, lots of 7 minus 3 e. Uh, part C to the question is going to be showing that either half the speed of a after the collision so 11 over 10 of u is going to be u over 5 lots of 7 minus 3 which is what we got in part b uh, so you can cancel each other out multiply through by 5 so 7 minus 3 from this point you probably could have stuck in your calculator from here you definitely can because that's just a simple equation to solve uh, so it's not going to give you the 30e, it's going to be 15. Okay, so these are half them. 
and it's what I wanted to prove. You find a lot of the questions in the exams are like this, where you've got, what, how many parts? One, two, three, four, five parts on this question? I mean, it's rancid, it's not nice, but uh, there you go. So, in part D, at the instant of collision, A and B are at a distance D from a vertical barrier fixed to the surface at right angles to the direction of motion. Given that B hits the barrier and the coefficient of restitution between B and the barrier is 11 over 16, find the distance of A from the barrier at the instant that B hits the barrier. So, this requires a bit of work. So, we've got the two particles, okay. One going at 11u over 10, fair enough, that we'd have used in part C there. And the other one is going to be 8u over 5. Okay, we have everything that we need. We're told that e is a half, so we can actually get what w is here in this case. So w is just going to be a u over 5 of, what is it, uh, it was u over 5, 7 plus 2e, e is a half, that's going to be 7 plus 1, which is 8u over 5. Um, so, the best way to do this, to work out the speed that it will bounce off the wall, is doing 8u over 5 times 11 over 16. Now, that's going to give me, what, 88 over 80, which is, what, 11 over 10u? So it rebounds with the same speed again. Interesting. Right, so let's do some diagram drawing. I like diagram drawing. So we draw our wall down. We draw our distance in of d. We draw our two little particles in, which I'll draw one there, and I will draw the other one there next to it. There we go. That'll do. And then I will draw them later, and later, and I will do them again when they move apart there and there. there. Okay. So literally all I'm doing is adding to the diagram. That distance we know was D. The distance between these here is X. The distance, well, that's going to go there. There's 11 over 10. We know that. Uh, it's going to come back at speed 11. You divide it by 10. So that distance for D is going to be... Well, we need to do some working out, don't we? So T1... The first time that we get is the time for B to reach the wall, which is D divided by 8U over 5, which is 5D over 8U. <laughs> the question is, how far does A travel in some seconds? So we're using speed distance time here. I can use 11U over 10 which was the velocity times by the time that we've just found. 5d over u. The catch here is that u's will cancel each other out. Um, so we just get uh, 55d over 80, which is 11d over 16. So the distance that we want is 5, 6, is going to be d minus... This is what this bit here is. This is going to be D minus 11D on 16. Which is just uh, 5D over 16. Right. That is part D. Part A. Show that after B rebounds from the barrier, it collides again. Uh, with A at distance 5 over 32 from the barrier. Right. This is going to take some working. So. The way I like to do these is using time ratios. So the first two times is got to be equal to that final time there. 
Now, T1 we just found was 5D or 8U. Okay? I just found that in part A. Or part, the last part just did part D. We want to find now what T2 is going to be. Now, T2 is the same distance, but the speed that we had was 11U over 10 from its rebound. So that's going to be 10x divided by 11u. When I want the next one for t3, the speed that it was going at was the same. It was 11 over 10u. You can assume it goes at the same speed. The distance was just d minus x. So I'm going to do 10 lots of d minus x, divided by 11u. Hence, I can come back to my original statement that I just made, so 5d over 8u, plus 10x on 11u, equals 10d divided by 11u, minus 10x divided by 11u. So we've got 20x over 11u equals 25d on 88u. That looks horrible. Um, combining fractions together. So x is going to be, well, the u's cancel each other out. So I'm going to say go bye bye. So x is going to be 25 on 88. Times by 11 over 20, which is 5 over 32. Is that what I wanted to prove? Yeah, 5 over 32. So, a lot of these questions use things that you know from lower down school because they have the same speeds, the speeds are the same. Uh, same speed, I'll write this down here. So it's for putting you know same speed the meet halfway so collide at five over thirty two D from the wall. And that's it. Nothing tricky with that, I don't think. Okay. I believe we have time for this question. Um, so, we have a mass of 2 kilograms moving at 35 minutes per second. Right, let's draw, immediately draw a diagram. Let's see how fast I can do this question. This is one really which I would have set you for homework if I was physically teaching this to you. Uh, x, y, this is just basically my solution to this one. Um, so, PCLM and the last, the usual stuff. So we got 35 times 2, 20 times 10 is 2x plus 10y. So that's going to be what, 270, yeah, is going to be 2x and 10y. Um, if we do Newton's law of restitution now, that means that e, which is 3 fifths, is speed of separation y minus x over 35 minus 2015. So 9 plus x is going to be y, which I'm going to make a substitution in here for. So 270 is going to be equal to What's that? 12x plus 90. Uh, so that means that x is going to be 15 then. And y is going to be, subbing that in here, 24 into this equation. That's what that's coming from. Alright. So, the question says, find the further time that it will last before the 2 kilogram hits the 5 kilogram, but hits the 10 kilogram again. Okay. So... It's five seconds after the impact, so it's essentially going to take 
five seconds before it's going to hit that 10 kilogram one again. If it takes that long, then what I can use the fact then is that 24 times by 5 is going to be 120 speed distance time. So we have that D is 120 now. We have that S is 15. So, literally all I need to do is 120 divided by 15, which is 8 seconds. So, if it was 5 seconds before, then 3 seconds after... B hits the wall. Okay, that's that collision. I did it pretty quickly because I'm sort of concerned about time. So we're almost there now. In fact, I'm saying we're almost there. We are. This is the last bit. This is the last example I'm going to go through now. The last bit of this video. We're going to look at questions involving multiple vertical bounces. So, I'm going to get this question underway immediately. Coffee restitution 0.5. It's bouncing as a tennis ball. Uh, so, it starts off similar to where we started the kinetic energy question earlier on today. When we were looking at things dropping over a certain height, we knew we could use SUVAT for that. There's my gravity. It's dropping 9.8. Not, not, not point 0.9, or another 10 rather, so F, 0.9, the acceleration due to gravity is going to be G positive, it's released from rest, we want to find out what V is first of all, so V squared is U squared plus 2 AS, so that's going to be 2 G times 0.9, or 1.8 G, so V is the root of 1.8 G. Then, we can use that fact that it's going to hit it at a half from the coefficient of restitution. A is going to be negative G this time around. V is zero. S is what we want. So all we're going to do is say that V squared, which is zero, is going to be a quarter times uh, 1.8. G using the same equation, minus 2GS. G will cancel each other out, so S is... It gives you 9 over 40, do you believe? Or 0.225 as well, that is also fine. So that's the first bounce. The second bounce, however... We have u being half again of 0.45g. Now hold on a minute. I can't read the question properly. Sorry, u is 0. I can't read the question. Uh, a is going to be g. Uh, s is going to be 0.225. Uh, we want V, so V squared is 2G times. So V is root 1.45G, uh, which will then become our U times the coefficient of restitution. A is negative G, V is 0, S is what we want. Hence, we can do the same thing, 0 is a quarter, times 0.45, G minus 2, G, S. Hence, it gives you, I believe, S is 9 over 160. How do you think? Alright, 
So part C is where we're using this bit in the bottom right, where we're looking at our series expansions. So we have here the first term is going to be A. So this formula comes from LL Maths. Uh, the R is what we really want to look for here. So we had 9 over 10. Uh, then we had 2 times 9 over 40 when it drops again. Then we had 2 times 9 over 160 and 2 times 9 over 640. Probably what you can predict. So the D is going to be 9 over 10 uh, plus 2 times 9 over 40. Uh, plus 2 times 9 over 160, uh, plus 2 times 9 over 40, plus dot dot dot. So that's going to be equal to 9 over 10, plus, using this formula, 2 times the first term, 9 over 40, over 1 minus r, which is 1 minus a quarter. Uh, which is, I'll move up here, it's going to be uh, 2 times 3 over 10, which is just, what, 6 over 10 plus 9 over 10, which is 15 over 10, i.e. 1.5 metres. And part D, criticise this model with respect to the motion of the ball as it continues to bounce. Uh, so, well, I can just stick this on the next page, can't I? Uh, let me write this out. Realistically, uh, the ball will eventually stop bouncing and come to rest. The model doesn't predict this, and that will do. And that is everything you need for Chapter 4 of Further Mechanics 1, Collisions in One Dimension.